Here we're going to measure seating. Seating again has two components, a product qualification and a compliance verification. So we're going to start with product qualification. And again, this should be done in a humidity controlled environment of 23 degrees C and 12% relative humidity. Obviously we're not in a chamber, but the measurements don't differ. First, I want to check the system to make sure that it's capable of making measurements up to 10 to the 11th. I have it on an insulator right now, so I'll connect it. I'll take the meter. And you can see we're definitely in the 10 to the 11th range. The reason that I use 10 to the 11th of the upper range is if you look at the seating document, seating standard itself, it says you have to have a meter that's capable of measuring 10 to the 11th. The limits for seating you'll find in, of course, 2020, which is this standard. Now, if you're just doing compliance verification, which is TR53, this TR says you only have to have a meter reading one order of magnitude above your limit. Since 10 to the 9th is your limit in 2020 for compliance verification, the meter only needs to be capable of measuring 10 to the 10th. So all these numbers are similar, but it's important to understand where they all came from. So we're going to make some simple measurements. First of all, on seating, there are five groundable points in this particular chair. If you notice, I have four of them covered with an insulator and just one with a metal plate. We've already checked to make sure that electrically, all these groundable points are electrically connected together. So we're just going to make a measurement from one of them. We select the one in the front, it's on a metal plate, and it's connected to the meter. So the first measurement we want to make is simply through the seat. And it meets our requirements. Next, both arms. Okay. Now the back. And finally, the chair rail, the bottom. All of them are well within spec. Now you notice I have cling wrap or saran wrap around the probe. And it's simply to make sure that I don't influence the measurement and I keep it insulated between myself and the probe. Some probes do have a slightly conductive covering on them. So we wanna make sure that we're totally insulated from making this measurement. To show you the effectiveness and why we put the saran wrap on here, we'll do a quick demonstration. I have my ESD control shoes on through an ESD floor that's grounded. I'm picking up the probe with the saran wrap and I'm going to take a measurement. Ideally, I need to be above 10 to the 9th, it should be in the 10 to the 10th region to make sure I don't influence the measurement. So we take the measurement. And as you can see, we're in the 10 to the 10th measurement, means we're at least one order of magnitude above what we need to do. Let me take the saran wrap off and show the effect of just grabbing the probe by itself. I now remove the saran wrap and just holding the probe in my hand. Notice I'm not touching the bottom at all. So we take a measurement now. We're actually measuring the resistance through me, through the floor, through my shoes measuring 10 to the seventh. So if the saran wrap is off or the insulated glove is off and I'm holding the probe trying to make the measurement, the measurement may not be through the chair or the seat, but through my hand to the floor. So you have to be careful with your probes when you're making these measurements and make sure you're truly isolated when you're holding the probe. So if we're making compliance verification measurements, you know, by notice I've removed all the insulators and the, the ground panel. Now we're going to measure through the floor. The floor is connected to ground. And so we're going to measure from the chair all the way to ground through the floor. And that's the only measurement you need to make for compliance verification. And again, compliance verification is done in ambient conditions. So wherever the chair is, you make the measurement as you find it. 